Have you changed your Vanos solenoids on your E90 BMW and yet you're still getting Vanos related codes? Well, stay tuned because I'm going to explain what the next most likely cause of that problem is and you're not going to like it. So in case you haven't changed your Vanos solenoids yet, they are actually located right here and right here. They're real easy to change, 10 millimeter, 10 there and 10 there, and they pop out and you can pop new ones in, very easy to change. If you've already changed them and that hasn't solved the problem, the next most likely cause is that the bearing journals right here actually are, are experiencing oil leaks. And that's because there are steel square cut O-rings here and here that are designed to keep the oil pressure inside of this lobe. And the whole purpose of this system is that, you know, the, the, the solenoids go on and off and they direct oil through this channel into the cam phaser here and that advances it or retards it depending on which side of you know the oil the oil is going into and coming out of so um, those those square cut those steel square cut o-rings were designed to keep the oil pressure inside this cam bearing ledge and because they're steel they actually wear into the aluminum uh, bearing material and when they do that it will cause an oil leak and you will have reduced pressure and your Vano system will not work correctly. And the only way to fix it is to actually replace this entire clamshell. This whole clamshell on the top here contains all the bearings for the cams. So there's a top and a, and a bottom clamshell. You gotta replace the whole unit. There's just no choice. And the way you know if this is the case is we have to actually disassemble this, open it up and we'll see those, those cam, those, uh, those areas where the steel cut O-rings ride and you can run your fingernail over it. and if you feel it with your fingernail you can feel like it's worn a distinctive ridge in there it's time to replace it now bmw did this was only a problem on the earlier models the 07s and 08s i believe bmw came out with a, a, a different teflon o-ring on the 09s and 010s and it was also offered as a like a warranty replacement and mine has actually had it done already according to bmw service history I'm just going to do this anyway because, you know, I need to make these videos for you. So you're going to see what, it, what you know, how to do it and how to, how to remove this and reinstall it. Hopefully uh, my bearing ledges are all fine. We're going to see what it looks like with, uh, what, you know, what, what the Teflon O-ring has done to my bearing ledges, which it should not have worn them down at all. So that's what we're doing. And you do need special tools in order to retime the engines. So let's take a look at those. So this is what those special tools look like. You can get one of these on Amazon. Uh, there are different levels of this kit. This one happens to contain the, the ones, the plates for the N55, as well as the 53 and 54 and 51 and 52. Um, I'm doing the N54. That's the engine I have, but this, this base, the same thing is applicable for all the engines. So, um, this is around like a hundred dollars and I saw some versions for 80 that didn't have the N55 plates. It just depends on what you want. The job is fairly straightforward. We need to remove these long bolts here and these bolts are torque to yield fasteners. So we're gonna need to replace them. I forgot to buy them. I did buy new Teflon O-rings just because I figured if I'm going this far, I might as well change it out for some new Teflon O-rings even though I got the old ones in there. Uh, but I, did, I forgot to buy the bolts. So I'm probably gonna need to go to the BMW dealer cause I don't wanna wait and I'm gonna spend probably 20 bucks a bolt, but oh well. Don't forget to buy these bolts. You need to be aware that you need to replace them. Now, before we can actually loosen these and get the, the cam phasers out and everything, we're gonna need to lock the whole, cam, the whole crankshaft and everything into place so that uh, when we try to take these bolts loose, the cams and the crankshaft and the whole timing chain doesn't move. We need something to kind of stop it from moving, to hold against it. And the way you do that is there's a locking pin that we're gonna slip into the back of the engine, it's gonna lock into the flex plate on the transmission. But before we do that, we actually need to rotate the engine around until it's at top dead center on cylinder number one. And in order to do that, we're gonna to need to take the fan out so I can slip a socket onto the, uh, crank, the crankshaft pulley and spin the engine around. To get the fan out, we actually have to remove the T25, which is right here. That holds the automatic transmission cooler to the bottom of the fan. By the way, obviously there was a whole lot of work done to kind of get to this stage. Refer to my valve cover DIY in order to see how to get down to this stage. Uh, that's obviously all the preliminary work you got to do. Um, there's another T25 bolt up here. Pretty simple. Now we need to remove this wiring harness right here, which is easier said than done one-handed. 
So you have to press both sides in and it was actually really hard to get your finger in on that side. So that comes away and then you just unclip this here and this one here and get that out of the way. Now you can take your fan up and out. Oh, actually, now there is another rubber bracket. It's right down in there and you can kind of reach down and, and push it away if you want to. You can pop it off or you can just sort of yank up hard on the fan and it'll pull out of that. All right, I'm gonna choose to uh, pop it out there. Just a matter of negotiating all the little clearances and stuff. Let go, let go. There we go. <laughs> yeah, reach down and pop that rubber bracket out. Otherwise it holds it up. Now we can slip a 22 millimeter deep socket right onto the crank pulley bolt. So now I can turn the engine backwards or forwards. Now on top of the engine here, you'll notice there's a little flat spot there. Those flats are gonna need to be on either side. And there's gonna be a little QR code on the top. Yeah, so that's the top of the camshaft. And there's another one down there. So that's an easy way to know when you are where you need to be. Right about there looks good. Looks like that QR code is right up top on both of those. So I'm going to switch to just a plain breaker bar at this point, along with uh, a shallow socket and an extension, just uh, so it's easier to slip in there. And I'm facing it downward like that. And the reason I've switched to a breaker bar is because I'm gonna need to get under the car in order to slip the crank pin in and I will need to rotate the engine backwards and forwards just to find the exact right spot where I can slip the crank locking pin in. And it's advantageous to use a breaker bar for that. That way you don't have to switch the direction of the ratchet as you wanna move backwards and forwards. So in order to remove the cams, we are gonna to need to lock the camshafts into place. And to do that, there is a crank locking pin that you're gonna slip into a the side of the engine down here, you're going to slip it through a little hole and it's gonna lock into the flex plate um, that's connected to the transmission. And in order, to, in order to do that, you actually have to remove a yellow plug. And this is what the yellow plug looks like. And it's actually slipped in inside a kind of a tight space. And what I had to do is reach down and I had to use a little pick tool to get inside that circle and pull the thing back. I was finally able to do it. It was actually really tricky to even find the thing and it's gonna be even trickier to show you where it is. There was no way that I could get video of me doing it. But we can see down there, inside there that where I have illuminated, you see that little flat spot right there. Let me get some kind of a pointing device here. So now this little flat spot right here, this little web that's sort of sticking out from the engine uh, bell housing right there. So it is basically right in the cavity underneath that web. Right in this little cavity right here. That is where, that's where the little yellow thing is and it's all the way towards the back of that cavity. So essentially what I did is I did it from up top here. I just reached down in there through that hole with my little pick tool and I, I knew that it was there. I knew it was in the back and I just sort of reached in there and I could sort of, I, I could feel it with my finger first. I could feel that little hole. And what I thought was going on, and, and this, I believe this was the case. I believe that the person who, who, who did this before, because again, these cams were uh, changed once before, or the, the Teflon O-rings were changed before. So somebody had this out and put it back in. And I think he put it in sideways like this. So that, you know, I think from the factory, it comes installed this way so that you can get your pick tool in that hole and pull it out. I think the guy put it in this way. And so I actually had to reach in there like this and lift underneath it like that and then pull it that way. So that's what I ended up doing. I could tell just from the feel of it that that's what was going on. So that's just something for you to be aware of. Hopefully your situation is a little easier than mine. You just slip a, a pick or a screwdriver in there and pull it back. And again, I did it from up above here, but you can also do it from below. So now one of these two crank pins is gonna fit in that slot, hopefully, and we're gonna figure out which one. 
So the way we can do that is just to guess by the thickness of this thing, which I'm gonna go with uh, probably the black one. Okay, I can't do it and film it at the same time. <laughs> and I might actually need to do it from underneath just because I, I don't have enough um, clearance for my hand going through here like this. So it may end up that I need to do it from underneath. So it's really going to be impossible to slip the crank pin in from above just because it's there's no room to get your hand. I mean, you can get your hand down there, but there's not a lot of room to maneuver the pin. Maybe it's possible for it to be done. There's no way I can film it. Much easier for me to slip it in from underneath. So I'm going to do that and you guys can watch from up here. So I brought both crank pins with me and I'm going to use the black one. See how that goes. Now that spot is right here. And you got to feel for the hole. Trust me, it is back there. And there it is. I slipped it in there. No, we're not in place because I can still move everything. So that's what you got to do. Okay, so the pin didn't slip in all the way. And I'm just moving it backwards and forwards, trying to find that spot, kind of rotating the pin as I do this. Now, it's entirely possible that there's QR codes on the top and bottom of those cams. I didn't check that. Maybe I'd have to go 180. Totally possible. Okay, I've gone quite a bit at this point. Let me go back the other way. No, I would say that something is wrong and I need to re-examine. So interestingly, when I came up above the engine here and started to, to rotate it backwards, I'm hitting a stop. I can go forwards, but I really can't go back. I feel like I'm hitting the pin somehow. So they say that there is a hole near the uh, hole you're supposed to be in, and that could give you a false impression. And I believe that that's what I keep slipping into. There, I think I'm in now. I can't turn the crankshaft anymore. Man, it's kind of like picking a lock or something. You gotta feel it and feel right when you're, when you're there. So yeah, now I cannot turn the cam or, or the, the crank either way. But you see how there's this little bit of play in the in the pin like this? I wonder if I am using the right pin. Because one was slightly bigger than the other, which means that if it's supposed to be the bigger one, this smaller one is probably not the right one. So let me just try the big one. Yeah, this big one does fit. I'm glad I did that. Yeah, it's a much tighter fit now. Boom, boom, much, much tighter fit. Yeah, so now it can't move at all. And there we go. All right, guys, now we are locked into place. We should be able to get these bolts off. They're 16 millimeters and they are regular left-hand threads. Okay, nice and cracked loose there. Well, almost. Yeah, there we go. And now this one. Cool. Spin these out. Whew, love that thing. Okay. So these are the bolts that you need to replace. Now, when I do Vanos, I just, when I take these components off, I set the ones for the right to off to my right and the ones to the left off to my left. It's just my habit. So these will pull out and sort of pivot down. They should anyway. They did for me before. I have done this once in the junkyard. However, I don't remember if I took the rings out first. But yeah, I obviously did. There you go. Same for this one. Let's turn this around. Maybe that helps. Yeah, turn it around. It'll, it'll pivot that way. Put the small part down. There's your tip there. To do this uh, the easy way, we need to take the slack off of this chain. And to do that, we need to actually take the uh, chain tensioner off, which is down here. Yeah, it's definitely a 27. I wonder if there's enough room. Maybe this, oh yeah, the hose can move aside. So that's not a big deal. So let me go ahead and slip the tool in there and then I'll, I'll get you a shot of it. So as you see, that's where the socket goes. And I just needed to move this, uh, this hose out of the way and slip the socket right on there. So now we need to make sure we're going the right way. 
which we now are. We're gonna take this sucker off. Easy enough. I think we can spin it out by hand from here. Looks like we're dripping a little bit of oil. So why don't we put a blue towel underneath just in case. Get this on out. Getting a little easier now. I think we've gone past the spring tension. So the O-ring definitely was stuck onto the, uh, onto the chain tensioner there. So make sure that yours has the, maybe it, it might get stuck on the side of the head. It's possible. Make sure you don't lose it. All right, now we've got slack. So we should be able to pop these off. I believe I used a little prying action. Should have some slack. Yeah, very good. So I'll reach back here and just pop. Ooh, there went our light. Hang on. Just reach back here and pry. Pop that one out. I'm gonna set that on the right. And back here. I'm doing this without harming the, the plastic guide here. Okay, we'll set this one off on the left. And incidentally, I was just prying right back here on the metal. I was just doing that. Same thing over here, or you could, you could do it on that side too. Okay, here's the part that always freaks everybody out. Removing the camshafts and there's that special tool that holds them down and all this stuff and it costs six or $700 and you don't need any of that, okay? This is really not that big a deal. You're not gonna crack the camshafts. They're really not under that much tension from the springs. And the springs on the valve springs are only really pushing up on two particular lobes right now. I'm not sure which one. I didn't note that when I took these apart in the junkyard. The reason I didn't know, I mean, I had gone there planning to note that, but the reason I didn't do it is because I realized once I cracked these loose and took it off that it's really not that big a deal. There's not that much tension, but you can go ahead and do it from the outside in. So. Just gonna crack these loose like that and then do that for the rest. Nice. Now I'm just gonna proceed to loosen them again in the same pattern. So far I can feel that none of these have any tension on them. I believe most of the tension was on the inside here. See now you can see it moving a little bit so most of the tension is actually right here. I can pretty much feel that I can just take these loose. When, when you're loosening the bolts and you can, you can feel that it's not, like the tension's not following you, you know that there's just no tension on it. There's a little bit there. See, a little here and here and then in the middle. So it's really these, these three right here are where all the action is. The ones on the outside, no action. So we just do these middle three, or middle six. In the junkyard, I just went nuts, by the way. I just removed like everything and just <laughs> nothing happened. There's not that much tension. That's pretty much it. From here, we can, you know, proceed to get them all the way out. And they are all the same. That's it, there's our prize. So now let's take a look. Crack open the Cracker Jack. Ha! Huh. Steel square cut O-rings. Here we go, guys. <laughs> Little ridges that are catching my fingernail. That does not even surprise me one bit. The BMW system said that uh, these had been replaced, that the retrofit had been done. It absolutely has not been done. <laughs> this is what the, the steel O-rings look like. You see how there's this little gap inside here. It's these two fingers that are locked together like that. If there was the Teflon ring. It would, uh, it would be solid all the way around. So that's how I know. Let me take this cam out like that. So there you go. That's the little steel square cut O-ring that was supposedly replaced already, but actually wasn't. At least on the intake cam, maybe the exhaust was done. Let's check that out. All right, let's get the exhaust off. We'll just do a time lapse through it.
And that is it. Ah, these bolts smell like an exhaust. Or it's hard to describe. There's a particular odor to uh, head studs, mostly. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, there's one more. Oh yeah, this one, you need to remove these in the front here. Forgot, we should have done that first actually. Yeah, that's an E8. I was wondering why that top clamshell was, you know, so far up in the back there. There we go. Let's see what we got on this one. Same deal. Same exact thing. Oh, I think maybe this side has been replaced. I got to examine this further. So guys, the, um, the exhaust side here is actually not that bad. I mean, you can, you can see that there's a, a area because obviously, you know, there's been a, there's been something running on that area for a long time, but there's no distinctive ridge on this one. There's a very, very slight one in the back here, really. Very, very slight. It's, it's really nothing significant at all. It's nothing like the, the front where that one is a, a significant ridge down. Like you can definitely feel it. You can definitely feel that it's cut quite a groove in there. So I think that the exhaust can be reused. Well, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to reuse the exhaust and I'm going to find out if I'm right or not, because no big deal for me. I don't mind doing this job twice. I mean, I wasn't getting any codes before I did this, by the way, no codes at all. Everything was totally fine. So um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna source some new uh, intake side, uh, intake clamshells. That should be a little cheaper, a little easier to swallow. <laughs> this is the Teflon O-ring, by the way, and this is the part number. It'll be linked in the description. I got these from ECS Tuning. That's what it looks like. So that's what you'd be looking for. It's kind of grayish and it doesn't have those little fingers holding together. That's how you know. Now, honestly, <laughs> part of me is wondering what would happen if I threw this whole thing back together with this old bad one, you know, what would happen? I'm just, uh, I'm just wondering if this Teflon O-ring would take up the space in the groove, you know? I guess it has to, it would have to do with, um, is it cut the exact same size? I mean, obviously it would have to be, right? It has to ride in that channel, it has to be literally the same size as the steel square cut O-ring. So I, I really wonder what would happen. Would this Teflon O-ring sort of expand to take up the gap? What do you think guys? Should I, should I do that? Should I, should I be the guinea pig and do the wrong thing just to see what would happen? Because at, at worst, what, what happens is you lose a little bit of oil pressure and you start to have Vanos codes. What's the big deal? You know, then you, you know it didn't work and you take the thing out and you buy the proper part. But I'm really kind of, I'm, I'm asking myself, should I try this? Okay guys, one more thing you should do while you're in here, while you have everything off like this and exposed, is you should push down on the hydraulic lifters and you should feel if any of them are kind of squishy, which these ones are, but these ones are hard here. These ones back here are pretty hard. So they're still pumped up. And all the ones on the bottom actually were pretty hard, but these ones on the front right here are all feeling kind of soft, particularly this one right here. So what you can do is pull out the rocker and the lifter together. The lifter just kind of snaps in. There's a little spring right there. So we'll set the, lo the rocker right down. So the lifter here, let me show you this. So you see how I can push it down a little bit and it's a little bit springy. It should be pumped up with oil. It should hold the oil that's pumped up into it. And uh, it should have taken up all the clearance in the valve train. The fact that it's still squishy like this, that's not a good sign. That, that could mean that's potentially the, that's actually probably the reason for all my clattering, the clattering in my valve train. 
when this engine's running. So I think what I'm going to do is buy a couple of new ones of these to replace these. Because these should still be pumped up like all the other ones are. Here is another one, and here's an example of what it should look like. I'm pressing down, and you cannot see it pushed down in any way. This thing feels rock hard. That's what it should look like. All right, guys, it's been five days, and I have some developments on this saga. So I have new bolts for one thing. Those came in, so we are able to put everything back together now. And I ordered, it was more cost effective to just buy all new lifters, a whole set of 24. These came shipped FedEx from China. Like there's a FedEx in China now, and they got here in three days, which is crazy. The guy markered out this part number for some reason, and they were already cut on this seal right here. I'm hoping that's because he just wanted to add in this bubble wraps to keep the keep them from rattling around, but I don't know. They look they look right. So and they look brand new. So hopefully they actually are real authentic INA parts and not just uh, aftermarket stuffed in an INA box, but I guess we'll find out. As far as the cam ledge goes, these things are like, nobody has them in stock. Nobody has them. And ECS tuning, like I placed an order and they won't get the part in for two weeks and then they're gonna turn around and ship it to me. So I'm super bummed about that. I have all these parts and you know, it's only been a couple days. I have all the parts I need except for the cam trays. But then I decided to go to the junkyard today and I found this <laughs> and this, it looks, it looks bad. I mean, look at the oil change intervals on this car. All the, all the red varnish here is not a good sign. However, <clears throat> these cam ledges are good. There's no ridge at all on these ones. I don't know why. Uh, the the exhausts were were they had a ridge. They they were pretty bad. The exhausts from this car were as bad as the intake from my car. Actually, a little bit worse. But for some reason, I guess this one had a similar situation where the the intake ledges were replaced for whatever reason in the life of this car. Both sides are really good. So anyway, I just took this today. Just got back. And I'm super stoked, man. This is great. Now I don't have to spend 500 and something dollars, 550 or 60 dollars on brand new ones. This was, I don't even know how much because I bought some other stuff. It was probably around 50 bucks. I'm super, super stoked on this. I'm really happy. I just need to clean this thing up now and uh, we can proceed with putting everything back together. So I will, I'm going to do my best to kind of use some degreasers, try to get the varnish off. I'm sure quite a bit of, it'll, bit of it'll come off. There's really not much caked on stuff such that I, I need to go to and get them hot tanked, I don't think. All right, yeah, I decided to get them hot tanked at my local machine shop. It was only five bucks each. So that's a deal. So I got those cleaned up. They're, they're pretty good. There's my, maybe still just a little bit of gunk in the corners in these, but I, I don't care. It's good enough, you know, I'll clean that little bit up. But yeah, I mean, they got them, they got them pretty clean and I'm happy. So. Definitely gonna install the new Teflon seals on here and we will get this back on the car and finish this video up. All right, here's how we do this. I'm gonna take this out, set that aside. Now to get these rector rings off, what you do is you push one side down and then use your finger to bring the other side up. And so what I'm essentially doing is, uh, see that? Kind of like that, right? So. I've got that top side, that top part of the ring up, and I'm just bending it outward, and that's how I was able to separate it. And then you can just use that to get it up over that ridge and work it off. So that's, that's it. It's kind of like a piston ring. Get this at an angle. Yeah, just like that. New Teflon O-rings. These are a little funky to install, but I just sort of did that. Look close at this because you don't want it to turn. You want to make sure that uh, it's in correctly, and it is. Okay, 
that's good now. So take a little bit of oil. You could use assembly lube if you want, but it's really not going to matter because, um, you know, I'm going to turn the engine on like right away. If I was going to let this sit for a year, okay, use assembly lube. A little thicker. But honestly, even if you used oil, it's just, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. Like that. Anyway, time to get these on the car. So I'm uh, not going to make you guys watch a video of me replacing 24 lifters, but I'll just show you one. And what you do is you just pull it out. You see how it's clipped in right there. So we'll just take it out and put our new one in, pop it down on, and maybe I'll get some oil. Just throw some oil down in that chamber and pop that in and just lay our, our roller right back on. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to do that for all of them. Now, um, if you're going to do this, you just need to know that when you start the car back up, everything's going to sound really loud because none of the new lifters are going to be pumped up. So it's going to, you're going to have to run the engine for a little bit, definitely at speed, at least for like 10 minutes in order to pump enough oil into those lifters and get the noise to go away. So really all you do is just go for a long drive. And by the time you get back, everything will be quieted down and good to go again. Okay. Now I get it. These boxes were meant for rollers and, uh, and lifters. It must've been a set of four each. So that's what that is. Oh, well, hopefully these are, um, these are the right parts. All right, guys, that's all done. I've got all 24 lifters installed. Real quick, guys, let's talk about the special tools that you could have for, you could buy and use on, on, on reinstalling these that I don't have and I'm not gonna use. Um, so there are two tools in that set. There are, um, well, there are two different kinds of tools. One is this little, it's sort of a C-clamp. It's sort of a, it's, it resembles this. It resembles this, it goes over. There's a threaded hole in the side of it and there's a little screw in the side and you just thread the screw through and the screw touches on the top and bottom of these two ledges right here. And I guess the point is, or the purpose is to make sure that these are perfectly aligned with one another. Now, I don't, uh, I don't exactly get this because this has two locating dowels on it, on either side here and then, and then back here. So these are definitely gonna be aligned to each other. The only thing that I can figure is that, um, here, let's start this cam upright for just a second. Uh, the only thing I can figure is that when these are on and they're aligned, it is possible to bend them side to side like this. So, you know, to flex them like this. And I guess that's what BMW was concerned about that, that make sure they don't flex side to side. But then again, the cam being in here is going to prevent that from happening for the most part. I guess there could have been small deflections side. There could be small deflections side to side. Yeah, there's, it's possible to have, you know, some deflection side to side. I can see it right now, but just with a, a bar clamp or something, I can just clamp this right here. That's going to prevent that deflection from happening. So yeah, there's, there's different ways of, of doing everything. Now let me talk about the other tool in that kit. So the other tool in that kit just bolts down right here. I actually don't remember if it has an open space so that you don't have to take the fuel injector out. But all that tool does is it has two fingers which press down on these valves right here. I think they press down in the center of the, the rollers here. And then that's on bank two to press the bank two down. And then here on bank three to press those ones down. Because when you're installing the cams, that's, I guess, you know, there, at any one time, one lobe of the, the camshaft is pressing downward, whereas the other ones are not going to be pressing on the cams. So that's why when we were taking this off, the only ones that mattered on the exhaust were these two, these, these particular bolts right here. And the only ones that mattered on the intake were these ones right here. You could have technically taken everything else off and left just these two on. And, th and then the same thing here, take everything else off, leave just these two and just take those two one by one slowly. And the cam is just going to do this while it comes up and you're fine. There's, there's, there's really no danger of it snapping in half because all, again, all the pressure is left right here. So if you leave these bolted down all the time, that's it. 
that's you know there's none of the other cams are none of the other cams have pressure on them or none of the other cylinders have pressure on them it's just these two that have the pressure and then these two that have the pressure so that's what that tool does it, it has fingers that holds them down but I'm going to show you how we are going to do this and without even really needing that so it's going to be interesting all right we got our exhaust cam right here ready to go in now super super important that you make sure all of these rollers are sitting on top of the valves that's the big that's the big gotcha right here you got to make sure that those are on top because if you start to bolt this down and they've slipped off you gotta do it all over again i've got this aligned such that the um the qr code is facing upward and so you see the number two cam is is pointing down so again that's the one that's going to want to stick up a little bit so we're going to put this in place about right here. Again, make sure that it doesn't knock any of the any of the things off, any of the rollers off. Put one bolt in here to hold it. Another one over here. Just get them like all the way down as much as possible. So I just want it to hold it down and on. Yeah, like that. Now, you don't have to replace these, by the way. I have checked that in the specs. These are not torque to yield fasteners. Now, again, these are the two that have all the pressure on them. These are the two that we need to get down. All right, so my thought was to use a clamp like this to get in there, but as you see, the fuel injector's in the way. So scratch that idea. That would have been a cool idea, though, to just kind of uh, keep, these, keep these held together but it's just not going to work unless I take one of these fuel injectors out, which I don't want to do. So forget that idea. I actually don't think it's even really necessary. We're just going to go for this and we're going to see how these, uh, how the alignment is on these things. Once I get this bolted down, which I think it, it's going to be just fine. So one last check to see if the, fuel inject if the rollers are in place and they are and I'm just going to clamp this down carefully so the end of that was sticking up just a tad little bit probably because one of the um, one of the, the cam lobes was maybe just barely down so that's uh, one thing to check on. We'll check on that with the other one before we do it. But yeah, as I'm looking at these, the ledges on the side here, they're perfectly aligned. There is no deviation at all. I couldn't align them better if I clamped them together. So they're good, they're fine. All right, I think we can run the rest of these down. It looks like these two are depressed a little bit. These two here, and then these two are depressed just a little bit. So. I will take back what I said and, you know, go for this one and these ones at the same time. That's what I should have done. So there you go. As you see, it really didn't hurt anything. I'm starting to suspect that the whole cracked camshaft thing is a little bit of a, a little bit of a tale that's told on the forums, you know, one of those things that just gets often repeated. A friend of a friend's dad's brother's uncle once, you know, had a camshaft that broke in half. Where are the parts? I can't find anything, man. I can't find anything. Everything grows legs and walks, walks off. So annoying. What was I doing last? Oh, I know what I was doing. It's in the car. So I see now that the, the QR code is a little bit cocked. So that might be what happened with the cam there. It kind of got a little out of place. When that happens, in order to get it realigned, you can stick a 27 millimeter socket on the back here or a wrench or something and turn the cam, which I will do. Right there. And now I see that those valves are not uh, compressed down anymore. All right, let's do the intake side. I did just check these rollers to make sure they're good. And we are where we need to be. Now let's see where the cam lobes are going to be. It looks like the rear ones are wanting to kind of come down a little bit. So it's these rear ones that are about to come down and then uh, cylinder three. So three and six on this one are the ones to kind of watch out for. So I, I can feel that the cam turned already. 
just by putting it back down on. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna reach over, block you guys, and just double check that I didn't shift any of the lifters. In fact, why don't I do this? We gotta get some bolts going. Okay, so it's three and six that we're gonna do. Now, I'm gonna look over, make sure that none of these are off. Make sure they're all in place. I didn't knock anything off. Hard, it's harder to see these ones, so you just, better to do it by feel. This one we're gonna do this way. My thinking here is that if I'm pressing it down on two other ends, this middle is kind of bulging up a little. Why don't we avoid that? Alignment's great. So everything is gonna get eight Newton meters at first, and then it's gonna get 60 degrees after that. So it really just wants to make sure that it's, that they're all even. So the ones that, um, the ones that are not tight, tight, I'm thinking we should back off of those and come back onto them. So obviously these ones that are gonna have some pressure on them. And I felt that this one wasn't either. Yeah, it's a little bit tight. That one was a little tight, I'll come back to it. Both of those in the back were a little tight. All right, just to make sure we're good here. All right, we are ready for the 60 degrees, which is gonna suck. It's gonna take a long time with this stupid thing. There are multiple ways to do what I just did. Um, it was a little bit of a pain just because my tools are, I don't know, not the best, not ideal. Snap on tech angle would be a really ideal thing to use. Yeah, there's a, a like a little degree wheel thing you can put on each bolt and it kind of clips to the side, it clips to something. And um, you can just manually see when you're at 60 degrees. That's probably the easiest way. That would have been faster for me. I have one somewhere, but. I don't know where, and I didn't want to go searching for it. So yeah, I think these are totally fine. Fingertip test is the best. Your fingertip can sense alignment on things. You know, you can tell if something is like a thousandth off or whatever. And uh, these feel great. I have triple checked that all my alignment feels good and all my rockers are in place. Everything is good. Everything is, way, is the way it's supposed to be. So we're gonna put these cam phasers on now. These should go on fairly, fairly easily, and they do. And uh, this one actually says E-I-N for intake. It's probably not the word, but <laughs> the German word for intake is, starts with an E. And then for exhaust, it starts with an A. So A-U-S, right there, that's the exhaust one. Of course, I kept them on either side so that uh, they would be good, and they are. So again, it doesn't matter if you're, if you're perfectly aligned because everything can turn independent of one another. So get these on. I mean, you can see how like we could turn these this way and then you have the, the, the slack on this side of the chain. That's not where it's supposed to be. So you wanna turn things towards that side and then turn this towards that side. All the slack, the chain tension should uh, go on this side because that's where your chain tensioner is and that's gonna take up all the slack and then you just bolt these to the cams and everything's 
everything's good. So we still have our pin in place. Now we need to put some uh, an alignment tool on here to lock the cams perfectly in place. And then we'll put another alignment tool on here when we align the tone rings, which again, the small end goes down in there and that's how you can get it up in there. I know these are, you know, varnished up and they don't look as good as these do, but I don't know. I didn't want to get the, I didn't want to get the, the phasers clean because I'm not sure if there's a, there's probably a seal inside of here and I wasn't sure what the cleaning was going to do to that. I suppose I could have gotten the tone rings clean, but I don't know. What was the point? All right. This tool is going to go down here and lock into place. Uh, it looks like I have to readjust this. There's another hole right here. I got to take this off and put it on there. And I think I'm also just going to disassemble this. It might make it a little easier to get it up into place there. All right, guys, the cams are locked into place. I did take this off first and then I just kind of maneuvered this in here and it was possible to get this bolt down without taking this off or anything. So now we have this piece, which needs to bolt down here. And you see there's these two alignment lugs right here. So we're just gonna figure that out. Probably needs to go right here, doesn't it? No, couldn't go there. Has to bolt down to, oh, bolts down the other way. That's what it is. All right, let's get these two things torqued down and believe the torque is 8.5 Newton meters. Cool. Now we can get this plate installed. So they need to be aligned sort of like this with the holes down in the corners here. And there's two little pegs that go in those holes. Let's get those aligned right there and right there. So now I need to in install this chain tensioner and just takes up all the slack on the chain. And that is probably easier said than done. Going to need to give it the old reach around. Okay. I got it. Yeah. Get that all the way in until it bottoms out. Turn the middle thing. Your arm goes numb which it just did. I should have looked first to see what, um, what wrench goes on this. Cause you basically just want to, you want to take up the slack so that there is no slack left in that chain. I'm, I'm guessing it's an eight millimeter. Let's see if my guess is right. Ooh, what a pain. Yeah. You can move that hose out of the way though. Oh, it was a good guess. Cool. So I'm going to, Tighten this up a little bit. Probably don't want to go too tight here. You're probably supposed to go finger tight. I think that's probably good. Probably plenty. So it does not specifically say that these should go in dry uh, in the way that it said that for these bolts up here, these ones must be blind. I don't think that these are blind obviously because hollow camshaft. So I'm just going to hit these with a little WD-40 because I think that that's best. Um, when you're doing head bolts dry, like that's just not a good idea. They, they will crack, you know, and when you're, when you're tightening them down, if they, what I mean by crack is they'll sort of skip, you know, if they're not lubed up and that, that messes up your whole torque. So since these are, um, you have to tighten them down to 20 Newton meters and then 180 degrees after that, since you have to do that, I don't want them to skip. Let's get them right there. All right, I got this thing set to 20 Newton meters and then 90 after that. So I'm going to do two ro rotations of 90. So we're good there. And we're done guys. The last piece of the puzzle, if you're reusing the chain tensioner, BMW says to squirt all the oil out of it like this a couple of times. So that's easy enough to do. Then we can install this back on the car. Not sure how much point there is to you guys watching me screw this thing in. So not really sure what the torque is on this thing. I will tell you in just a second, but I am, uh, there's no way that I can torque this. I don't have a torque wrench with a flex head. So I'm just using my judgment, which says that that is good enough. The torque on that was 55 Newton meters. So now all we have to do is remove that crank pin and we're all done. Ah, let's see if I can do that without getting down on the ground. Ah, I got it. Yay. Easy to take it out. Not easy to get it in.
Uh, but I am going to have to go underneath to stick this thing back in, but I'll do that later. All right, guys, we are back to where we started. We're all done with this job. All right, guys, I have had the fuel pump fuse unplugged because I've had the battery plugged back in because I was doing other stuff. And the, while that's in, the fuel pump likes to turn on randomly. So this thing was spitting fuel before I realized it. So I'm going to go plug that back in. And then I think it's time to start the car. No leaks, so that's good. No fuel leaks, so it's quieted down just a little bit now. Uh, you can definitely still hear it's clicking and clacking, and it's not running perfectly smooth. Again, I think it's down to those uh, those fuel injectors. We will be changing them very soon. This is about how it's always been. There's you know a little rough running when it's warming up. So I cleared the engine adaptations with my scan tool here, and it seems to be idling a little bit better. Earlier it was burning off some oil from the back there just because when I took the valve cover off some dripped in the back on the exhaust. <clears throat> I think that's mostly burned off now. Yeah, I'm going to let it keep on warming up and um, then I'm probably going to go in the car and run it at speed with my foot on the gas for a little while, see if I can get the lifters to pump up. It might take like a full drive for that, but they're already sounding a little bit quieter. So it's getting much quieter. It's still not all the way there. Um, now the pulleys are actually bugging me a lot more than anything else. Those do need to be changed. Going to do that in probably the next video very, very soon. But that's a little more loud than that is. See, it's still some oil burning off there now. I got to let that burn all the way off. But we're getting there. All right, that's quite enough of that. It's quieted down quite a bit, although it's not perfect. It definitely needs to just take a drive on a freeway for a little while. That's going to get the lifters to quiet down all the way. I think I got a couple of them, but not, not every last one. Um, I reset the adaptations and that seemed to sort of improve things a little bit, but not really. They're still, it's still missing at idle. So the thing needs its fuel injectors replaced. Don't worry. I have new ones and uh, they're going to go on very, very soon. Well, that turned into way more of an adventure than I was expecting. I wasn't expecting to have to replace the cam ledges. I'm super happy that I was able to find the one that I needed in a junkyard. That was a lucky break. So this turned, didn't turn out to be too expensive. All in all, it's really not that difficult of a job. We got out of it without buying too many specialty tools. Of course, we had to buy timing tools, but it really wasn't a big deal. Um, I would suggest using a degree cam wheel thing. Those are easy enough to work and you can work those on these engines. Not, not a big deal. Guys, if I earn your subscription, I want to thank you. Give me a thumbs up if this was a good video to you, but even subscribing is not enough. You know, you got to keep clicking on the videos and watching them. Otherwise YouTube is not going to keep recommending them to you. So I appreciate it. If you do that, I'm Jason, the fifties kid. Thanks a lot for watching.